One of the more controversial people in Georgia history is William McIntosh. His father was Scottish, his mother was a Creek Indian. McIntosh was a man of two worlds. One was white and one was Native American. Because he fought well against the British in the War of 1812, he was made a general in the United States Army. Because he was respected by the Creeks, he was one of their chiefs. They called him the White Warrior. In 1823, McIntosh built a hotel and a tavern at Indian Springs near Jackson. He was a wealthy man. But the Creek Nation was struggling. The Creeks owned millions of acres of land in Georgia, but the government wanted it. They wanted to sell it to white farmers to grow cotton and other profitable crops. But the Creeks had lived here for many generations, and this was a sacred place to them. In fact, it was against Creek law to sell the land. The Creeks believed in a, a sort of communal life and lived in communities or townships, and the land was held in common. Europeans believed in ownership, and uh, when two worlds collide with different ideas about <clears throat> ownership, the stage is set for conflict. The result was armed conflict. Part of the Creek Nation wanted to fight for their land, and they fought fiercely but in the end, they were outnumbered by the U.S. Army. There were other Creeks who wanted to negotiate a peaceful settlement with the government, who thought that the Indians should sell their land and leave Georgia while the government was still willing to pay. McIntosh was one of them. This is what he said. The white tide rises. We can't stop it. And if we don't sell, we will be cast aside, homeless, and treated like animals without any place to go. There were many treaties signed over the years, each one selling more Creek land to the government. Finally, on February 12, 1825, Chief William McIntosh signed the Treaty of Indian Springs here at his hotel. The treaty gave the United States government the last Creek land in Georgia in return for $200,000 paid to Chief McIntosh and a few other Creek chiefs. Many Creeks accused McIntosh of breaking their law against selling land. They came to the hotel, and one of them stood on this rock, shouting in anger. Brothers, the grounds of our fathers have been stolen by our chief and sold by him to the pale face. Their goal is in his pouch. The grounds are gone from us, and the plows of the pale face will soon upturn the bones of our fathers. And then the leader called to McIntosh, who was inside the hotel, preparing to sign the treaty. You snake! You will die for this! For Chief McIntosh's deed, he was executed according to Creek law at that time. Um, no Creek chief could sign a treaty selling Creek land, and so that was the law that he was executed under. A white interpreter was an eyewitness to the death of Chief McIntosh, and his recollection of what happened was written down in a letter. The following is taken from that letter. We got to the McIntosh house and waited in the woods in the dead of night. At three o'clock in the morning, the warriors lit their torches and set fire to the house. They shouted, McIntosh, we have come. We have come. We told you if you sold the land to the Georgians, we would come. McIntosh barricaded his front door and fired on the warriors. He then retreated to the second story with four guns in his hands, which he continued to discharge from a window. He fought with great courage. His two wives, Peggy and Susanna, had been dragged out of the burning house into the yard. They implored the warriors not to burn up their husband, but to take him out of the house and shoot him, as he was a brave man and deserved to die like an Indian. McIntosh now came down to the first story and was received with much rifle fire until being pierced with many bullets fell to the floor. He was seized by the legs and dragged down the steps to the ground. While lying in the yard, he raised himself on one arm and surveyed his murderers with a look of defiance. At that moment, 
a warrior plunged a long knife in the direction of his heart. He drew a deep breath and expired. That was what I saw on May 1st in the year 1825. Chief McIntosh betrayed his people and he paid with his life. And because of his treachery, the Creek people suffered bitterly. Without land, they were plunged into poverty. A once proud and self-sufficient people were now hungry and homeless. 